Hi kids, today on Read Aloud with Mama Z, we are reading Paddington and the Marmalade Maze, written by Michael Bond and illustrated by R.W. Alley. One day, Paddington's friend, Mr. Gruber, took him on an outing to a place called Hampton Court Palace. I think you will enjoy it, Mr. Brown, he said as they drew near. It's very old and it has over 1,000 rooms. Lots of kings and queens have lived here. Paddington always enjoyed his outings with Mr. Gruber, and he couldn't wait to see inside the palace. As they made their way through an arch, Mr. Gruber pointed to a large clock. That's a very special clock, he said. It not only shows the time, it tells you what month it is too. Perhaps we should hurry, Mr. Gruber, said Paddington anxiously. It's half past June already. They hadn't been inside the palace very long before they came across a room which had the biggest bed Paddington had ever seen. Queen Anne used to sleep in it, said Mr. Gruber. I expect they put rope around it to stop her falling out when she had visitors, said Paddington, looking at all the people. This is known as the Haunted Gallery, said Mr. Gruber. They do say that when Catherine Howard's ghost passes by, you can feel a cold draught. Paddington shivered. I hope she's got a duffel coat like mine, he said. Mr. Gruber took Paddington to see the kitchen next. In the old days, they used wood fires, he explained. That's why there is such a high ceiling. There was a lot of smoke. I was hoping they might have left some royal buns behind, said Paddington, licking his lips. Talking of buns, said Mr. Gruber, I think it's time we had our lunch. He led the way outside and they sat down together on the edge of a pool. As Paddington opened his suitcase, he accidentally dropped one of his sandwiches into the water. It was soon alive with goldfish. They must like marmalade, said Mr. Gruber. I wonder if that's how they got their name. When they had finished their sandwiches, Mr. Gruber took Paddington to see the great vine. It's very famous, he said. Every year they pick over 500 bunches of grapes. Imagine that, Mr. Brown. I'm trying to, Mr. Gruber, said Paddington. I think I might plant a grapevine pip when I get back home. Mr. Gruber chuckled. I'm afraid you will have a long wait, Mr. Brown, he said. That vine is over 200 years old. Now, said Mr. Gruber, before we leave, we must visit the famous maze. Sometimes it takes people hours to find their way out. I hope that doesn't happen to us, said Paddington. My paws are getting tired. Perhaps it, it's time I took you home, said Mr. Gruber. Much to his surprise, the words were no sooner out of his mouth than everyone around them began to talk. Hey, that sounds a great idea, said a man in a striped shirt. Please to wait while I buy a new film but for my camera, said a Japanese lady. I've never been inside a real English home before, said another lady. I wonder if they serve tea. Oh dear, whispered Mr. Gruber. They must think I'm one of the guides. What shall we do? Mrs. Bird won't be very pleased if they all follow us home, exclaimed Paddington. She only has one small teapot. Then he had an idea. Follow me, he called. I think perhaps we ought to go in the maze after all. Are you sure we are doing the right thing, gasped Mr. Gruber as he hurried on behind. Bears are good at mazes, said Paddington. You need to be in darkest Peru. The forests are very thick. And sure enough, before Mr. Gruber had time to say any more, Paddington led the way out, leaving everyone else inside. However did you manage to do that, Mr. Brown? gasped Mr. Gruber. Quickest visit I've ever seen, agreed the man in the ticket office. I used marmalade chunks to show where we had been, said Paddington. It's something my Aunt Lucy taught me before she went into the home for retired bears. But I thought you had eaten all your sandwiches, said Mr. Gruber. 
I always keep a spare one under my hat in case I have an emergency, said Paddington. That's something else Aunt Lucy taught me. She'll be very pleased when she hears. As he stopped at a kiosk to buy a picture postcard. And he stopped at a kiosk to buy a picture postcard so that he could write and tell her all about his day out. That night, when he went to bed, as well as the postcard and a pen, Paddington took some rope. It's something Queen Anne used to do, he announced. I've a lot to tell Aunt Lucy, and I don't want to fall out of bed before I've finished. The end. <laughs>